we were standing around Miss Yvonne in the picture. She's in the wheelchair right there. I'm gonna let you see the pretty faces of all the people on there a little bit better. Miss Yvonne, uh, in the last three years, had had several things happen. She lost her husband and she lost the ability to walk. She can walk some with a walker, but most of the time she uses a motorized wheelchair. And this ramp that we built during the mission trip is going to uh, help her go in and out of the house with so much ease. Just a moment before that picture was taken, we were all gathered around Yvonne praying. I, I could feel the hand of God in the circle there with us. It was upon me. It was upon all of us. This is one of those moments in life, maybe you've had one too, where you can feel the presence of God. So I like to call those places, those times, the thin places. The place in my life where there was much less distance between me and God. Or you might even say between heaven and earth. Uh, there was so little distance. God was right there with us as we prayed over that ramp. And Yvonne was encouraging us uh, in the prayer. There's not that many moments in life that feel like that. And then I talk to our kids who are in that picture. Give me that picture again, would you? I talk to John and uh, Levi and Tristan, and they felt it too. You, you felt God's presence upon us. There are certain places in our lives, in the world, where God speaks clearly to us. I mean, do you have a place like that that I'm talking about, one of these thin places? Could be a coffee shop, a vacation spot. Uh, Cole was so excited to tell me he was going to the beach. Maybe his spot will end up being at the beach. It's the first thing he told me when he came and sat down. It's your church. This place where you can feel the presence of God. If you lived in the Middle East, one of the places that people of both faiths, many faiths, feel the presence of God is at the Wailing Wall on the Temple Mount where the temple once stood that the Psalms of Ascent are talking about traveling. And there's a place there where people can feel the presence of God. Here at Slash, we have worshiped in this place for many, many years as a congregation. And we return here <coughs> because we can feel the presence of God. So if this is a new concept for you, I want you to think about it today as we're thinking about it, the concept of a thin place where you feel closer to God than anywhere else. Uh, the thin place comes from, uh, it's, a, it's a Celtic, a Celtic term. Uh, the ancient Christians believed there were places on earth where the distance between heaven and earth collapsed, disappeared. It was easier to encounter God at those places. It was easier to experience God there. They experienced God there more than any other place in their lives. Thin places are thin, I think, because the people of God gather together there and connect with each other and with God. And that's why those places become thin. And if we go to Slash Church every Sunday for 180 years, Slash, this sanctuary, becomes one of these thin places too. Because we come here each week, 
we gather together and we connect with each other and with God. Now, toward the end of the book of Psalms, there are these psalms I was telling the kids about called the Psalms of the Sin. Psalm 122 is one of those. It's called that, as I told the kids, because you have to go uphill to go to Jerusalem. And there are several Psalms of Ascent towards the end. And we're, we're going to talk about them, but here's the deal. They sang these songs three times a year. There were three different festivals where you were required in the Jewish faith to go to the temple in Jerusalem. So there's three times a year they're singing. So these songs are well known. And these travelers who sang the song know when they were singing them that they were about to go where they could meet with God to a thin place where they could encounter God and it would make a difference in their life. Psalm 122 is the song that they sang right when they got there. This is the song they sang right when they got into the presence of God at the temple. Let's read it now. A song of a sense of David, Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. We already sang one song with Psalm 122 words. We're going to sing another one later. Our feet were standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city should be, solidly united. Where the tribes, the Lord's tribes, go up to give thanks to the name of the Lord. This is an ordinance of Israel. There thrones for judgment are placed. Thrones for the house of David. Pray for the well-being of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. And may there be peace within your walls security within your fortresses because of my brothers and friends i will say may peace be with you because the house of the lord our god i will pursue with prosperity the word of god for the people of god, Thanks be to god. so it says that david is the author of psalm 122 David knows that when he gets there at the temple, he's going to meet God and he's going to meet God's people. And he knows that he's going to be inspired and encouraged. And this psalm made the people who sang it excited because they were anticipating that moment when they would be together within the gates of Jerusalem. Our feet are standing within the gates. And what does the psalm do next? He talks about looking around the city at its walls, commenting that it's well built. Uh, he says in verse 3 that, that we and the city are solidly united. He looks around at the walls of the buildings and the people, and then in verse 4 he says, this is where my people, my tribes meet. And he says it's a place where authority is uh, in verse 5. And then if this place can thrive, he seems to say the whole world will thrive. So he says pray for Jerusalem in verse 6. And then he gives a blessing in this. Uh, he says may those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your fortresses. David's prayer is for peace and security. The word for peace in Hebrew is shalom, which means like complete well-being inside of you. May you have complete well-being. Uh, then the word for security is shalawah, uh, and that is not just your security, but security all around you. So he's praying for peace inside the hearts of the people of Jerusalem 
and he's praying for peace uh, of the you know, physical city of Jerusalem. He's covering both. He concludes the psalm by saying, I, I, I feel so good right now. He doesn't say this exactly, but I'm giving you my translation. I think what he's saying is I feel so good right now that I'm not going to worry about myself anymore. I'm going to do something for others. And he specifically says, I will, I will pursue your prosperity, not, not just his. And so it's, it's a blessing. It's hard to understand for us, but what I'm talking about is all there. And so what do I learn from this? I think I learned something that you already know. So you're so smart. You already know this. But I'm going to tell you what, what I'm taking away from this. This is what happens when you go to the house of the Lord. You get that peace. Other people care about you and take care of you. We know what happens when we go to the house of the Lord. That's what happens when we go to church. My eyes turn away from me and they turn towards you and they turn towards people outside of the church. Psalm 122 is a story of David going to the house of the Lord. And it became so popular, everybody sang it when they got there to this, let's call it a thin place in Israel. Now let's talk about the other Psalms of Ascend a minute that I have alluded to because together they kind of tell the story. In Psalm 120, a Psalm of Ascend, that story is basically, I'm in trouble. You know, whenever I'm in trouble, I need to go to the house of the Lord. That's what Psalm 120 is about. It's about going to the thin place where they can meet with each other and meet with God. In Psalm 121, he is singing about all of us starting on our way to visit the house of the Lord. And what they're singing about is we know exactly where we are going. Because once we, you've been to the thin place where you can meet with God, then you know where the thin place is. And so that's what Psalm 121 is about. They're all going to church. And so they, they sang these songs when they're on the way up the mountain to Jerusalem. Uh, and once you've been there, you won't forget how you feel when you're there. If you've heard from God there, then you can go back there again and meet with God again. It's a place where God is for the Israelites. It's in the, the tabernacle in Jerusalem in the temple. And so they lift their eyes towards the mountains all the time in the Hebrew faith because what happens when you go to church? You meet with God. That's why it says so many times over and over in the Bible, uh, lift my eyes, you know, and see God. That's where they travel to meet with God. And so this one we've read today, 122, that's after you arrive. But what is it that the people learn when they arrive at the temple and they sing Psalm 122? And I think it is that sometimes location matters. It is true. God is everywhere. You can meet God anywhere. You can meet in your bed, in your living room. You can meet with God in your pajamas. You don't have to go anywhere necessarily. God, but some places are thinner places than others. Some places are more holy. Uh, you know, <clears throat> what do you expect to do when you go to church? Think about that. What do you expect to do when you go to the pool? Swim, yes. And you were right, they are quiet today. And what do you expect to do when you go to the restaurant? And what do you expect to do when you go to church? These people know these and have learned these lessons over time. And I think 
Our location does matter. One of the reasons I can worship God so fully is because you are here with me when I'm worshiping. I don't think I make the same connection with God if we are not all gathered together. It's about all of us coming together, offering praise and thanksgiving to God. You know, because when we meet together, we do it just like the song's talking about in tribes. You know, what were sort of tribes in that time? I mean, they were like families, right? I mean, so we bring all of our different families together and we worship God. Israel was made up of 12 tribes for most of the year. They lived on their own in their own territories. But these three times a year, they gathered all together and they felt that power of being together and worshiping together. <coughs> Back to Miss Avon. You know, part of the reason that we encountered God so powerfully was because all of those in our group from the Christian church in Virginia, because there were other people pictured that were from other churches, but all of us, the Habitat people, Miss Yvonne and her family, we all gathered together. We were touching each other. We were together. And that's part of the reason why we experienced God so fully in that moment. Because we were, we were giving thanks and worshiping together. We learn from Psalm 122. And from our, all of our experiences in our lives. That, that we, we need places in our lives where we can encounter God. We need the house of the Lord. We need the thin places in our lives where we can go and meditate and experience God. So, I mean, don't you agree? Amen. Yes. So, your assignment, if you want to take it this week, don't, don't take this place for granted. Come as often as you can and come ready to encounter don't take these people that we gather with for granted because we're your tribe. Everybody, everybody needs a tribe. God's power is present whenever we all get together. And then, third thing, pray for a few friends that you could bring into the tribe and invite them. Bring them in so we can all go to the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, help us uh, to value the thin places in our lives and also the people that we meet in them. And if we are uncertain about these places, please reveal them as we pray and prepare our hearts for more of you. Amen. I'm going to turn the lights back on. In case anybody's going to sleep. I realize I didn't do that. Anybody asleep? No. no. Okay. You can see the slides a little better. Maybe it made a little less heat on this hot summer day. We're going to receive our morning offerings right now. Please give as you can. Uh, for those that will watch the service later in the week, we sure appreciate the way that you give online as well. We will 